Hi everyone, Yas Eske Carlos Sirzate to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today we're going to be making a pecan pie with a phyllo crust. It's going to be so gooey and delicious. The crust is going to be flaky and buttery just like it always is when you're using phyllo. Very easy to make and it is definitely a crowd pleaser if you're thinking of something to make for Thanksgiving or if you're having a special event during the fall and you want to make something festive and delicious, this recipe is it. Let's get started. So we're going to begin by making the filling. So the filling is super easy to make. I have one cup of dark brown sugar. You could use light brown sugar. Make sure it's tightly packed. To that, I'm going to add two tablespoons of all-purpose flour, a half teaspoon of cinnamon, and I go heaping, so it's almost like one teaspoon, a half teaspoon of salt. This is a very sweet filling, and this kind of offsets the sweetness and also deepens the flavor. Just mix that all up a little bit. Then I melted four ounces or, or one stick of unsalted butter. I'm going to go ahead and add that with three eggs that are at room temperature, one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. Then we're going to add some unconventional ingredients, but I never uh, have corn syrup on hand, which is what's traditionally added to the pecan pie filling. I don't have it on hand. I'm not going to buy it because I never use it. So I'm going to add honey instead. So it usually ca calls for a quarter of a cup of honey. And um, I tested maple syrup. Just to, It's such a beautiful fall flavor. So half a cup of maple syrup. Let me see if I have enough. I don't have enough. So I have, <laughs> I need to buy more maple syrup. But if you have half a cup, put half a cup in. But I'm just going to do, I'm going to finish this off with the honey. So it would be half a cup of maple syrup and a quarter of a cup of honey. But I'm adding a little bit extra honey since I'm out. And let's do a quarter of a cup more honey like the recipe says that's what i tested and that's what works and spraying your measuring cup with either avocado oil or any kind of oil any spray oil that you have or you can even rub some olive oil in that it really helps the honey release so you don't waste any and just mix that all up and two tablespoons of heavy whipping cream for some richness then over here i have about three cups or 250 grams of pecan halves they're not toasted. I'm going to take out about a cup's worth because that's going to go into the filling and the rest they're going to be used as a decoration on top. So you want to make sure you have pecan halves for this. Otherwise, you won't be able to do the decoration. You can definitely add them into the filling. I just like the way they get nice and toasted at the end and they add some crunch and flavor. So I like to add them on top and then some chopped, roughly chopped pecans inside the filling as well. And that's it. The filling is ready. It looks like a luscious light caramel sauce and it smells so good. I'm going to set it aside so we can prepare the crust. All right. So I melted another stick of butter. That's four ounces or what is it? 113 grams. This is unsalted butter and I'm going to be using a tart pan. So this is a nine inch round tart pan. You can definitely use a pie pan instead, but it has a removable bottom. So it just looks really pretty once it's all done. I like to use the wrapper to kind of grease the pan a little bit. And I also add a little bit more butter. So I have half a pound of number four phyllo sheets. There, that's about between 10 to 12 layers of phyllo. You want to make sure that they're at room temperature. So I used half of it when I was recipe testing this the other day and I left the rest in my refrigerator. So I could do this video for you guys today. You want to use the number four, the thinner phyllo for this, by the way. So you're just going to layer one sheet at a time into the pan. Of course, some of it is going to be extended outside of the pan. Drizzle all of it with some butter and just keep layering it and go around the pan. Try not to have these all in one direction. And every two to three layers, you can add a little bit of a cinnamon sugar layer. That's gonna add some crunch and sweetness to the crust. You don't have to do this, and you would do this just to the inside part, the one that's inside of the tart pan. Just you sprinkle about, what is it, a teaspoon or so of granulated sugar in, in there and then sprinkle some cinnamon over that, nothing fancy. And you don't do that to every layer, just every two or three layers. And when you get to the final layer, you don't have to add any butter to it. Then you give the filling one final mix or whisk or whatever, fold, and you pour it all into the pie pan. And then you take these pecan halves and you can just arrange them on top in any pattern that you like. I like to do it in a little circular pattern, beginning from the outside and then moving in.
And it's very important that you do this whole thing on a baking tray. You don't want to just try to uh, lift the tart pan up and put it in the oven because it'll fall apart on you. Then go ahead and brush the edges of the phyllo that are extended outside of the pan with butter and then gather them all together to form a nice rustic border. And one more brushing of butter all along the border. And it would also be a smart idea to either line the bottom of the pan before you start with parchment paper or with aluminum foil so that way all that butter doesn't create a mess later on. It's just going to make for easier cleanup. My oven is preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. This is going to go in and bake on the center rack for between 40 to 50 minutes or so. It's going to be beautifully golden all around. And when you shake it, it's not going to, the filling shouldn't jiggle anymore. Maybe a little bit in the center. That's how you know it's ready. Once it comes out, the hardest part is for you to wait for it to cool completely. Then it'll be ready to serve. So my pecan pie was ready in 55 minutes, but keep an eye on it because oven temperatures do vary and you might, yours might be ready a little bit sooner, maybe a little bit later. You're looking for the pecans to have a deep golden brown color. And again, the filling should be mostly set, maybe a tiny bit jiggly in the center. That's how I like it. If you want to cook it all the way through, that's fine, but I like it to be extra gooey. So I just take it out a few minutes before and then I let it sit at room temperature until it's nice and cool and easy to take out of the tart pan. Um, that can take an hour, two hours. The longer you wait, the better, because the last thing you want after putting all of this effort in is for it to fall apart while you're taking it out. If it's too hot, it's not going to set. So you want it to set completely. This is a great pie to make either in the morning if you're, if you're hosting something or bringing it to somebody's house, or you could even do this the day before. It's going to be so delicious. Take it out and then put it either on a serving plate, a cake platter. I like to put it on a cutting board. I think it looks really rustic and pretty. It's time for the taste test. Do you hear how crispy that crust is? You definitely want to hear that. The filling is just... It looks perfect. Mm -hmm. So delicious, especially with that cinnamon. I don't think cinnamon is a common ingredient in pecan pies. I haven't really seen it, but I like to give it a little bit of that baklava flavor. I would have even put a little, maybe a quarter teaspoon of cloves in here. You can give that a try. I think I'll do that next time. The layers of sugar and cinnamon in the phyllo do add a little hint of sweetness and some crunch. They kind of crystallize in there and just taste so good. That flaky crust is so light and delicious. It goes perfectly with the filling because the filling is sweet. It's sweet and gooey. It looks like caramel, but it doesn't taste like caramel. It's just so good, full of pecan flavor. And I think that the flaky phyllo just goes perfectly because it's not too sweet and it's light and airy. I think you guys are gonna love this. If you wanna learn how to make this with a shortbread crust, let me know and I'll do that as well right before Thanksgiving so that way you have options. I hope you guys give this one a try. Make some Greek coffee, call some friends over and enjoy this. I'll see you back here next time with another delicious recipe. If you want the exact measurements, they're on the website, DimitrisDishes.com, so check it out. Print the recipe out and also check out the shop while you're there. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me today. I'll see you all next time, yes us.